Hello and welcome to another week of daily prayer with for and from St Catherine's. Time to think, hmm, what should we look at this week? We've been looking at the story of St Paul and every now and then, well, we've been looking at the story of St Paul, I've thrown in one of his letters that fits that part of the story. Uh, the last part of the story that we had was Paul heading to Jerusalem, having visited Corinth for the second time. And it was round about that time that he wrote a letter to them. And what a letter that was. We know it as 1 Corinthians because he wrote another letter to them, which is called 2 Corinthians. Uh, I thought we'd look at 1 Corinthians. It's a really interesting letter. It's quite lengthy, but we've got plenty of time. And it's, it's an interesting letter because it's very practical. Paul is dealing with issues, with problems, and the problems that were happening in Corinth, the problems that happen the world over. Um, they probably happen in Easton as well. So we'll have a look at that. For this week, we'll come back to it in other weeks. Uh, join me for a journey through Paul's first letter to the Christians in Corinth. Firstly, join me for our opening prayer. And so to our reading, which comes from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter one. Uh, so Paul had visited Corinth. He'd spent two or three years there. Then he'd moved on. Then he'd come back and had a return visit. And he stayed there a while. And then he moved on. And somewhere along the line, somebody from Corinth visited Paul or caught up with him or bumped into him. I'm not entirely sure what. And gave him a rundown of how things were going. Paul said, how's things in Corinth? And they said, well, there's this and there's this and there's this and there's that. And Paul went, oh, my goodness, and decided that he needed to write a letter to them to try to deal with some of these things. This is the beginning of that letter. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth. To those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus for in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you should be in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it's been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptised into the name of Paul? I thank God that I've baptised none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that none can say that you were baptised in my name. Oh, I did baptise the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't know whether I've baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to proclaim the gospel, the good news. And not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. We human beings are naturally tribal. It's just something we do. Just All you have to do is... Look at how the whole football supporting business works. It, 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 
exploits our tribalness. And in all kinds of ways, we divide into tribes, we divide into groups. Uh, we naturally gather together with people who are like us, people who see things the way that we see them. And in the age of the internet, that's become actually quite a problem because people get don't get their news from the BBC any longer or the ITV. They get their news from whichever bit of the internet tells them what they want to know. So there we go, we've got a problem. And back in Corinth, much the same thing was going on amongst the Christians. They were being tribal, they were dividing into groups. I'd suspect the ones who said, oh, we're Peter's people were those who were Jewish because Peter very much focused on the message of Jesus for Jewish people. I suspect that those who were saying, oh, we're Paul's people were people who weren't Jewish because Paul had triumph then but then there's Apollos he had a slightly different angle and the group that always makes me smile are the ones that are we're of, we're of Christ it's like they're the they're the really smug ones <laughs> oh sharp sharp but they they were divided the fact is even the ones that were from Christ were defining themselves against the Paul lot and the Peter lot and the Apostle lot and the good, Apollos lot and the goodness knows who else lot so the church had got into strife and difficulty and arguments and preferences and people flying their own flags and waving the, you know, quoting their own preferred leader. And Paul is saying, no, 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 please, no, 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 don't do that. And don't do it in my name, especially glad I didn't baptise any of you except him. Oh, and him. I've got here half of... A, um, a masaka, which I baked yesterday for our supper. We'll have the other half for our supper today. And there's all sorts of things that goes into a masaka. And there's no point in saying, well, the thing with a masaka, I have a masaka because of the aubergines. There we go. Look, you can see the aubergines there on the bottom. Uh, or I have masaka because of the crunchy breadcrumb topping. Or I have the masaka because of the meaty bit or the tomato bit or the, che or the cheesy saucy bit. You can't separate a masaka out into its constituent parts and, and like it for one thing or other. It's a masaka. It's, it's the coming together of all that stuff. And the same is true of lots of things in life. And I think God's church, God's gathering, God's people are a mix. That's how it is. The, the psalm that we've been looking at today, Psalm 148, is God is praised by the sun of the moon. He's praised by the people. There's no point saying, oh, well, I worship God like the sun worships God, or I worship God like the stars worship God, or I worship God like the young women worship God. The, the point the psalmist is making is God is praised by all of this together. And all of those have a different way of doing it. But all of those different ways of doing it all have some value and hold holding them together held together the work of God is done. A masaka is the coming together of aubergines and tomatoes and mince lamb and cheese and white sauce and breadcrumbs and probably a few other things as well. That's what makes it a masaka. And a church, a gathering of Christians, is a mix, is a muddle, is a blend. It's all about difference. We're not there to be tribal. We're not there to get into factions. We're there to be different, and each in our own way, to reflect the wonder of God. People often feel that Paul is hard to understand. Uh, these letters are hard to understand as a person, he's hard to understand. And the key to understanding Paul is that Paul is always trying to understand Jesus. 
Paul is always trying to do the Jesus thing, but he's trying to do the Jesus thing in a very different environment than the environment that Jesus was doing it in. Jesus was doing it in a rural Jewish community where everybody were farmers. Paul was doing it in great cities, metropolises, where there weren't any farmers and there was a, a, an enormous mix of people from different races and different cultures and different religions. But in a very different place, what Paul was always trying to do was to do the Jesus thing, as was Peter, as was Apollos. That was the thing. They were doing it slightly different because they were doing it in different ways, in different places, and they were different people. The focus is trying to do the Jesus thing. And that's what we need to do. We're not in Paul's situation. We're not in Peter's situation. We're not in Apollos' situation, whatever Apollos' situation was. We're in our situation. And we have to do the Jesus thing in our situation to the best of our ability. That's why we do Jesus's prayer every time, because I think it, it, it's like a tent peg. It holds us in place. Join me for that prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. That just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer for today. And it's the first salvo that Paul fires off in the direction of Corinth saying, come on, people, stick together. Right at the end of that passage, Paul wrote this, Christ uh, called me to proclaim the gospel and not with eloquent wisdom. Not with eloquent wisdom. He tried eloquent wisdom in Athens, which had been his previous stop before he came to Corinth. Hadn't gone down very well. He arrived in Corinth in a very different frame of mind. We'll have more of that. Tomorrow, we're going to look at that issue of the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the cross, the way God looks at the world, the way God sees the world. It's different from how we see it. Join me for that. But for today, join me for the bread of grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.